It's official. According to industry insiders, the supply chain nightmare that has been plaguing the United States for the past couple of years is set to remain for the long term, aggravating shortages and resulting in a historic slowdown in domestic production at the same time that retailers grapple with record shipping costs and a weakening consumer demand. Even though many were expecting the crisis to ease now that the health crisis started fading away, experts say that's not the case at all. In a repeat of the 2021 scenes, thousands of empty containers are piling up at U.S. ports, contributing to five-digit container prices, as well as the worst delivery delays on record and empty shelves all across the country. In some places, rationing has already begun, and the trend is expected to intensify as we move into the second half of the year. There's a lot to cover in today's video, but before moving on, please give us your support by leaving a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel to stay updated with the most important news. Approximately 4 million containers are stuck outside ports worldwide as congestion takes a turn for the worse. As analysts with logistics company RBC noted, that's the perfect recipe for even higher shipping costs. When ships are scarce, regardless of whether due to an increasing number of vessels queuing at a port or true demand, prices see upward pressure, they wrote in a report released last week. The analysts also highlighted that supply chains are seeing the worst delivery delay on record right now. The time of turnaround, known as TOT, continues to rise, leading more ships to get stuck in queues outside U.S. ports, they wrote, adding that they expect freight rates to remain elevated for a protracted period due to scheduling problems, given that less than 15% of ships are arriving on time. The company revealed that at least 300 container ships that left the port of Shanghai last month are about to arrive at the U.S. West Coast, and their estimates suggest that some of these vessels will be awaiting berth for 111 days. That is a huge increase compared to last year's average of 37 days. Port congestion is worsening, becoming increasingly widespread. Michael Tran, RBC's head of digital intelligence strategies, said in the report, the plethora of problems is having a domino-like negative compounding effect across various markets, he emphasized. In the past 12 months, container costs have risen tenfold, jumping from $3,000 to $30,000. This year's shipping interruptions in China and Europe have exacerbated the container shortage and have driven prices to unprecedented levels, according to Josh Safran, director of Plug and Play Tech Center in Rogers. RBC also pointed out that the Russian aggression on Ukraine has prompted insurance companies to raise the cost of protection coverage for ships in the Black Sea. The increased insurance rates range between 1% and 5% of the value of the ship. Before the conflict, rates were only 0.25%. Moreover, with fuel supplies falling to their lowest level since 2007 and prices reaching all-time highs, RBC reported that operators are passing higher costs to customers. In a separate report released by Morgan Stanley on Monday, analysts said they don't expect capacity increases until late 2023. They predict that container prices in the spot market could reach up to $47,000 this summer, outlining that as the trucking industry faces labor shortages, that is also going to boost costs and increase delays. In a recent interview with Bloomberg, one industry insider said that supply chain problems will persist for the long term despite eventual improvements in port congestion. By now, too many choke points have emerged across the system, and none of them can be fixed overnight. Tim Schwarth, global forwarding freight CEO at logistics giant DHL, said while the flow of vessels and containers will start to ease as a global recession begins, conditions on global supply chains will never be the same. 
I don't think we're going to go back to this overcapacity situation where rates were very low. Infrastructure, especially in the US, is not going to get any better anytime soon because infrastructure developments take a long time, he said. On a similar note, logistics experts Shara Schiffling and Nicholas Valentesis Canelos explained that even if there is a best case scenario with the Ukraine crisis contained and no more lockdowns in China, supply chains are clearly going to be under heavy pressure for the foreseeable future. A new survey of corporate executives and CEOs revealed that 88% of companies are bracing for sweeping disruptions until mid-2023. Now that the U.S. economy is facing growing imbalances, supply chain problems are set to trigger a bullwhip effect, explained FreightWave CEO Craig Fuller. The bullwhip effect is a term used in supply chain circles to describe a scenario in which temporary surges in retail demand are magnified and exaggerated by upstream manufacturers and suppliers who rapidly increase production well beyond the level that can be supported by consumers. Eventually, retailers find themselves with more inventory than they can sell, and what started as a goods shortage ends up as a goods surplus, Fuller wrote. Although employment rates have rebounded, American consumers are incredibly stressed about the state of the economy and their personal financial security. Record inflation, crashing stock markets, higher interest rates, and growing economic and financial uncertainty are having a dramatic impact on consumer confidence. For supply chains, the consumer pullback couldn't come at a worse time. The bullwhip effect has created a massive overstock of inventories and has wreaked havoc on global supply chains as companies try to recover from the pandemic economy, the executive continued. A full 77% of U.S. container imports come from industries that have reported massive supply gluts, retail, electronics, furniture, clothing, and appliances. Freight waves anticipates continued weakness until inventories are worked back down to normal levels, Fuller warns. This means that a massive production slowdown is already taking place as the mismatch between supply and demand continues. At the same time, the United States' largest hubs of Los Angeles and Long Beach in Southern California are dealing with a record influx of cargo as retailers stock up on back-to-school and holiday goods. But this is happening just as U.S. railroads and warehouses remain clogged, and thousands of dock worker contracts across the West Coast have expired. The vacancy rate at Southern California facilities is now around 0.3%, with a lack of availability particularly acute in the inland empire counties of Riverside and San Bernardino, Port of Los Angeles Executive Director Gene Soroka reported at a virtual meeting of Harbor Commissioners last week. During normal times, the vacancy rate stood as high as 15%, he said. We can't build these facilities fast enough. And even though we boast 2 billion square feet from the shores of the Pacific now out to the desert region of Southern California, we've got to turn that cargo out faster and have enough space under the roof to manage all of these consumer and manufacturing products, he stressed earlier this month. The backlog of empty containers has more than tripled since February, taking up space at docks and aggravating congestion. As of Monday, there were more than 28,000 rail container units on the ground, about two-thirds of which had been waiting to be picked up for two weeks or more. All of this means that the disruptions we're about to face over the coming weeks and months are going to be far worse than most of the public knows. Before U.S. supply chains had been taken over by chaos in 2020, most Americans believed that the phenomenon of product shortages was a problem that only foreign countries had to face, and one they would never experience in their lifetime. But things have changed very rapidly. The shortages we've been witnessing came at a time of record inflation. But the truth is, 
we haven't seen the worst of the price hikes just yet. The high costs of everyday essentials have led many people to alter their spending habits, leading to higher levels of buying at supermarkets as well as greater demand for cheaper items. With each passing month, more consumers report they are avoiding brand names and buying only the bare necessities. June's BMO Real Financial Progress Index Survey found that 42% of Americans are changing how they shop for groceries, with consumers reporting the impact of higher prices of everything on their monthly budgets. However, supply chain issues are not only impacting prices at the grocery store. On Tuesday, a number of U.S. power companies released a report alerting that higher prices for energy are coming as they face supply crunches that hamper their ability to keep the lights on as the nation heads into the heat of summer and the peak hurricane season. Consumer power use is expected to hit all-time highs this summer, which could strain electric grids at a time when federal agencies are warning the weather could trigger rolling blackouts. Power companies are warning of supply constraints for equipment, which could hamper efforts to restore power during outages and push prices even higher. They're also having a hard time rebuilding natural gas stockpiles for next winter as power generators burn record amounts of gas following the shutdown of dozens of coal plants in recent years and extreme drought cutting hydropower supplies in many western states. At this point, millions of consumers are already rushing to stock up with some saying they've never been so stressed about empty shelves while others believe that what we've gone through so far has been just the start. The cycle of high prices and empty shelves is creating a vicious cycle where many buyers rush to stockpile products at home before they disappear from stores again, a phenomenon that's likely to gain force in the months ahead. In some places, rationing of some food products has already begun. According to the National Herald, some supermarkets have started rationing flour, sunflower oil, sugar, corn, eggs, milk, dairy products, cleaning supplies, and canned goods due to supply problems. Now, stores will temporarily be allowed to limit the number of goods that can be bought by a client, it reported. So far, most cases of rationing have been concentrated in European countries, but as one could figure it out, it was only a matter of time before it started happening in the United States. This is just another indication that the hour is late and that things are getting really crazy out there. Right now, some parts of the country are still experiencing the calm before the chaos, but it's safe to say that it won't stay that way for long. So. Use the time you still have left to prepare wisely, because things are rapidly spitting out of control out there.